the Chairman, House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on COVID-19, Honorable Dr. Haruna Michelia, the Deputy Chairman, Right Honorable Sam Onyebo, members of the, tra uh, the Presidential Task Force, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press. I welcome you to the national briefing by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 for Thursday, 21st of May, 2020. As we progress in the first week of the extension of phase one of the eased lockdown measures as directed by Mr. President, it is necessary to remind Nigerians of the objectives of this course of action, which is primarily to save lives. It is also of utmost importance to remind our subnational entities on the need to diligently implement the guidelines and to exercise caution in relaxing restrictions in a manner that is capable of setting back the gains already made. Above all, it is imperative for each of us to take personal and collective responsibility. The foregoing admonition becomes critical as we prepare for celebrations at the end of the holy month of Ramadan. It is the prayer of the Presidential Task Force that we shall all celebrate this Salah and many more in good health and beseech the Almighty to accept our supplication and look upon our nation and the world with mercy. I therefore use this opportunity to wish all our Muslim brothers and sisters a very happy and safe Eid celebrations. But as we celebrate, we want to once again caution on the need to wear a mask, keep physical distancing, avoid large congregations, avoid unnecessary interstate travels, and observe personal hygiene amongst other suggested safety measures. The Presidential Task Force is pleased to inform you that in order to underscore the seriousness attached to this COVID-19 pandemic, the House of Representatives has set up an ad hoc committee on COVID-19. In deepening the existing collaborative spirit, we shall work together with the legislature to be more productive and add value to the overall delivery of services to Nigerians on behalf of whom we hold our responsibility in trust. I welcome you, sir, for joining us in spite of your very tight schedules. These are very difficult and odd times, and we will need your legislative support and cooperation even in the execution of our mandate. In the same spirit of collaboration and coordination, <laughs> collaboration and coordination, I wish to inform you that I participated in the virtual meeting of the National Economic Council with the Vice President and all the state governors today. This is coming on the heels of an earlier virtual meeting between the President and the governors in a space of one week. During the meeting, the issue of alignment of the state-level actions with the guidelines issued was emphasized. Similarly, emphasized is the need for the states to diligently implement and enforce compliance. Particularly, I underscored the need for governors to provide personal and strong leadership at this time, carrying the policy of community ownership to the grassroots 
and create deeper awareness. The governors were also advised on the decision taken by some of their colleagues to permit large gatherings at such as such decisions could inadvertently endanger the elderly, the sick, and those with underlying factors during such gatherings. The strong advisory from the PTF is that large gatherings beyond 20 persons remains restricted and should be adhered to. On Monday, 18th May 2020, when we briefed the nation on the next steps of our national response as approved by Mr. President, that the guidelines for this phase would be explained in details and published. I'm pleased to inform you that the document is now ready and the national coordinator will present the document and subsequently upload it on the different platforms. This would further clarify any ambiguity hitherto perceived and no doubt cl clearly let us know where each and every one of us stands in playing our roles to make the guidelines work. For some time now, the Presidential Task Force has consistently answered questions and provided explanations on the category of persons and services exempted from some aspects of these guidelines, particularly as it relates to restrictions on interstate movement and curfew. For the avoidance of doubt, essential workers include our indefatigable medical personnel, diligent journalists, courageous fire services personnel, and telecommunication workers are all exempted. The Inspector General of Police has further clarified the categories of essential workers in alignment with the guidelines and has issued instructions to security agents to work on the approved exemptions. With this clarification, we sincerely hope that the persistent complaints of harassment by these categories of essential workers especially medical personnel and journalists, will be put to rest so that we can continuously work in battling this pandemic. And I would be upfront to offer apologies to all of you that have suffered some form of treatments that are not expected to have been meted out to you in the course of the execution of your several duties across the nation. The Presidential Task Force urges all essential workers to go about their legitimate businesses, carrying with them valid means of identification, and to exercise courtesy in approaching security personnel. Through the surveillance system set up by the Presidential Task Force, we have received reports that Nigerians have been purchasing the hydrochloroquine in large quantities. We wish to reiterate that this drug has not been certified for use in treating COVID-19 in Nigeria by the relevant health and pharmaceutical authorities. And that underscores the reason why initially we were very cautious of identifying any form of medi medication because we know that the issue of abuse in terms of self-medication will become quite rampant. We therefore strongly warn against self-medication. If you are sick, please seek med medical advice. And if you are confirmed positive, kindly self-isolate in an approved facility. The COVID-19 is highly infectious and dangerous, so don't attempt by any stretch of imagination to think that you can prepare yourself for management and also treat yourself. 
The Presidential Task Force continues to receive reports and support, donation of equipment and solidarity messages from professional organizations. In this regard, we want to acknowledge the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, Chemical Society of Nigeria, the NMPC and its partners, Mrs. Osia SA, through its Nigerian representative, Maestro Defense Systems Limited, for their generosity and offer of services pro bono. Yesterday, Wednesday, May 20, 2020, served as a stark reminder to the entire world about the severity of the COVID-19 when the World Health Organization reminded the world that we are still far away in the fight against this pandemic. According to Dr. Tedros, the WHO Director General, 106,000 cases were recorded globally in 24 hours, representing the highest single-day number since the outbreak of the pandemic. This is significant because it brings to realization the relentless assault of the virus on humanity. If after the several months of expenditure by the countries all over the world that would have run into trillions of dollars, we recorded the highest ever since the declaration of the pandemic in terms of number, 106,000 globally yesterday with the efforts that have been put in place, with the containment, with the testing, with the expenditure, we still recorded that number. That is truly an evidence of the fact that COVID-19 has come to ravage our wealth and our health. And it is going to disrupt the way and pattern of life. I don't know for how long, but I can assure you that our ways of life will remain disruptive for a very, very long time. For us in Nigeria, the importance of this message is very clear. We need to excuse skepticism about the existence of this virus and its potency, change our behavior, and commit to joining hands in tackling this pandemic. Yesterday we recorded as per fatalities 202 losses of life across our nation. To a lot of people, that is just a statistics. But for some of us that are sitting across here, it's not statistics. We can place some faces, and those of you that are sitting on the other side, you can place some faces on these numbers. And that drives home. That drives home the fact that we are in very difficult times. We are being confronted with an enemy that is unseen. We are being confronted with something that is overwhelmed the entire world and we cannot but do everything to reduce its impact, slow down its ravaging force and make sure that we flatten the curve and do everything possible to stop the transmission in our communities and exposing those vulnerable that can fall extremely sick and in the process, lose their lives. I will make it a little bit personal for me. I've lost a colleague in this process. Of the five working days, the week preceding Mala Abba being positive, the former chief of the late chief of staff to the president. Of the five working days, we sat beside each other in four of those days with the exception of the Tuesday that he went to uh, Kogi for condolence over the loss of the mother of the governor. I shared official functions with him. We sat beside each other for the four of the five working days. Some of my colleagues had meetings with him on Saturday and Sunday. Within the same week, 
But unfortunately, he lost the battle against COVID-19. I can see the face of a chief judge of a state who was my classmate in ABU when we went as young lads to study law in 1976. That's almost 40 something years ago. I can see those faces. I can see the ravage that has come upon our land. And I know you can identify with a lot of people out there. So my message to you today is that we have a collective responsibility to work together in NS, realizing that each and every one of us has a part to play in this enterprise so that we can force this virus and limit its spread. I am particular about congreg congregational gatherings, large gatherings, would expose even the 20% that we've been trying to protect. So I would urge our subnationals to really reconsider their decisions in allowing for large gatherings to take place until when we have been fully prepared and we can adjudge that the moment has come for that to be allowed. I now call on the Honorable Minister of Health and the DG. Nigerian Center for Disease Control to update you on the current situation while the national coordinator will intimate you with the critical elements of the guidelines. I thank you for listening.